graphic power grapher. Okay? This business is set up with multiple ways to work it. And why I've got at least one, two, three, four new dealers in here. So I want to take a few minutes and talk about this because for most of the rest of us in the room it's a good review because we don't think about it very often. We're just kind of nose to the grind and plodding ahead. But there's lots of different ways you make money in AMSOIL and there's some different programs that it, it really is good to understand so that because there are some AMSOIL dealers that they don't work this as a what's the best way to call it? Um, a multiplex business. They pick one niche and that's what they do. So you can do that. And some guys are very successful with it. And me, I don't have that good sense. I'm the guy that can't get this hand out of this program fast enough to get in this one and I get spun out and Judy gets mad at me for trying to do everything. But there are three primary programs that we work with. We refer to these as the this thing from tying me up. Just yank it up. As the um, multi-level marketing, retail on the shelf, and commercial. Now, the reason I set them up like that is because there's nuances and there's other different kind of things, for example, and we'll talk about those a little bit in, in a minute, but under the multi-level marketing portion, this is where we have dealers, PCs, we have what we call the catalog program, we have internet sales, we have direct sales. Somebody help me out if I miss something over there. What is PC? Preferred customer, okay? Now, under the retail on the shelf, this is a reselling account such as a park store, hardware store, garage. Quick Yeah, I don't have an A in there. That'd be yeah, quick lube. And what I would just say down here is these are guys who resell the product. That's the key. Anybody that is reselling the product is under what we call the retail on the shelf. Storefront. Any with a storefront, right? Because we can resell product direct as a dealer without a storefront, but we are not a retail on the shelf. That's why we refer to it as retail on the shelf. They actually have a business, a storefront. Commercial businesses. There's tons of these. Now this could be trucking. We could have farms. Taxi. Say again, Lee. Pest control. Pest control. things running out. And what I would put down here is that these are end users. I have another one of these. Yeah. Meaning that they do not sell the product, they use the product. Now, basically that's the three main avenues that Amsoil sets up for sales. We'll go into a little bit of detail on these, but the objective here is in these accounts, as you can see, is we basically function more like a conventional sales rep. Because these accounts, what we're trying to do with them is we set them up with what we call factory direct accounts. We're the servicing dealer, but the account does actually legally belong to us as we have a right to it in other words. And in the retail on the shelf, we're hoping those guys are going to sell product because as they sell product they buy more. 
we're like a whole, we are a wholesaler. Our commission is coming off of the wholesale side. They go out and sell it just like they would Valvoline, castor oil, or any other product. The commercial account, what we're looking for there legitimately is an end user who might actually really use a quantity of product, we would hope. Now, we have a lot of small ones too, but the objective there is these guys want to use Amsoil because it saves them money. And they're going to use that as part of their business so their bottom line is better. They're saving money because they're using Amsoil. The multi-level side of the business, that is where we personally sell. And that's also where we expand our businesses through recruiting other dealers to do the same thing. So there is no way to expand, as they say in the world, this, this type of business. There's no way to duplicate yourself in these two lines of the business. You can duplicate yourself over here, meaning that you can teach somebody how to do the business, do what you do, and succeed at it in the multi-level side. Now, in multi-level marketing, there's lots of information out there. And a lot of it actually is pretty good advice because there are so many startup charlatan multi-level marketing businesses that just run hard for maybe two to three years and disappear. So why I tell you that is Amazon has been doing this now since 1971. So we're talking about really approaching 40 years of business. And if you use this system and you make it work for nearly 40 years, obviously you're not using the techniques to start up, run wild, pack some cash away and disappear. You're actually built a business that uses these principles correctly. And in this business, if you don't sell product, you don't make money. In other words, this is not a headhunter recruiting operation that goes out and tries to see how many people you can sign up and then get bonuses for signing up so many people and it works its way up through this pyramid and somebody's making a lot of money as long as they're expanding out bringing in new dealers. And there's no money made in Amazon unless you sell product. It just doesn't happen. So it's a product-based business. And I might tell you that it's a lot better than it used to be, but for some of those Amsoil dealers we've been around a long time, we've always said Amsoil makes the best products in the world and they're working on their marketing skills, okay? <laughs> they got a lot better. They've hired a lot of good people. They're doing a lot of different things in marketing. But what has really made this company hold together for the time that it's run is just undoubtedly good products. And they know that, so you'll see Amsoil at times seemingly bending over backwards, making products that seem to be in the almost overkill, but that's the marketplace that Amsoil functions. What you have to, we are not designing products at Amsoil for people who want to buy the cheapest product. We're designing products for people who want to make sure when they buy a product that the number one thing is they get what they pay for, that they have quality involved. Uh, there's a way to look at it to me is that if you go down to uh, the dollar store and you buy something at the dollar store and it costs 99 cents and you bring it outside and whatever it happens to be, <laughs> you go to use it, it breaks into four pieces and you have to rake it up and throw it in the garbage. I don't care that it costs a dollar. Your response is, that's a piece of junk. I wasted a dollar. So something that's junk can cost little or nothing doesn't change your opinion of it of being junk after you've had it. You just feel like they've got my buck. Good thing it wasn't much more because that was junk. But if you go buy something that costs $10 and you use it and you say, gosh, look at that. That little thing really works. Boy, that little notch there works just like it's supposed to. This does just what it says it's going to do. That's a good little device. Somebody spent some time designing that. You're not looking for change from your $10. You feel like that was what it was. I, I, that's what I wanted. It, it did what it said it does, I'm happy. So when it comes to looking at products and their quality, most of the people who stick with Amazon and like it are those kind of people who like to get quality for what they pay for. They're not looking necessarily to buy something exceptionally cheap. They don't want to overpay for something, but they sure want to make sure they got the quality for what they bought. So that, that's one of the, the key ingredients to this business. So okay. 
we've got multi-level marketing, retail on the shelf, and commercial. Uh, Judy, you keep an eye on the time for me because at 8 o'clock I want to take a